Hey, what's up? Welcome. This is Whitefield in a different setting than usual. It was warm outside and Adams wasn't coming to my place in the uh, damp basement. So now we are in his garden with a nice fire. An epic setting, like he said. We have a classic update for you. As in, these are all records that uh, make good on the promise that I did to myself about buying records that look back and not forwards. Uh, just, you know, classic material. Uh, but I want to start out with a few reading materials. Uh, the first one is the freshly dropped Black Blood Zine issue 2, 21-22, uh, Norwegian Satanic Art. This is from Stian Masticator. Um, yeah, that was good enough to do a trade with me. I got the first one from him, uh, I think about half a year ago, maybe. This is the second one and this is miles. I mean, he took leaps since uh, issue one, which was also a very good scene, but this is, you know, a different level. There are a lot more pages. The printing is unbelievable quality. Um, like I said, there's BSOD. There is, like you saw, Nachtlich. There's tons of promo material. Uh, there is a Slutet article that goes on and on and on and on and on and on for, I think, about 12 pages. So it just very good. Ritual abuse, as per usual in these videos. Um, so yeah, like I said, departure chandelier. It keeps on going. There you go. Name dedicated by the man himself. I traded a carved cross tape with him. Um, I hope he's happy. I think he's happy. And uh, forever drink the blood. There you go. Very good. As if this wasn't enough, um, and thank you, Stian. Uh, he threw in the extra tape. I am going to work with the lighting here because it's getting dark. But like I said, epic setting. It is just a, um, what is it? A max full 90 minutes and it's chock full of material compiled that he, um, it's different than the list he was uh, that is in the zine that he was listening to when he was making the zine, but this is, you know, all-time favorites, I think. A tape limited to 33 copies. This is number nine. And there's a nice name dedication, like I said, working with light. But the J card is excellent. This is actually in... Um, yeah, he cooperated with uh, Ritual Abuse to make these things. Uh, so it's extra special to me since I love both of these guys. But yeah, I will talk about the tape more. Uh, I haven't mentioned who is on here in a tape delay and I will talk about the zine more once I have read some things but um, yeah a 10 page article on Slutet and um, it's going to be great for the preparation the video with Danny I'm doing Saturday so I don't know what's going up first possibly this I'm looking at him but he doesn't know so we'll see into the update proper not that the zine isn't you know like I said, classic material. Uh, the first thing is um, Celtic Winter by Graveland, and I have to see it's from 92, like I said, classic material. Um, the demo, but it is the fifth demo, the sixth demo, if you count the promo tape from, I don't know, from when? 92 also, so there's a promo from 92, and then, you know, a lot of early material came out very fast, so a lot of demos up until the full length uh, that I'm, Blanking on before the full Carpathian Wolves from '94. So, Graveland is a band that I have decided to get into from the demo material because I don't know too much about the last. I've listened to Thousand Swords here and there, never delved into because of the obvious reason that I talked about in last videos. But I decided to make it well worth. Uh, if you listen to Velas, if you listen to Legion, the things they were doing early '90s. It's one of the cornerstones that I was missing for the entire picture, um, just because of the... It is so hate-filled and aggressive that it, there had to be a link between what was happening and the entire Raw scene and not... It's, it's complicated, I'm getting there, but once... One record at a time, this is the, uh, like I said, Graveland with Celtic Winter. Uh, this is out on Forever Plagued Records, limited to 500 copies. Great cover picture. All their pictures are insane. Well, insane is not the right word, but you know what I mean. They are different. It's more ghost-like in a way than um, they don't have weapons. Maybe that's it, I don't know. But yeah, very good record. This is a demo 
uh, but it's actually a very good sounding demo the sound for from Poland even the most raw material like full moon for example is actually very audible the recording quality was always quite good and I think that's because they had good studios I'm not sure but there you go classic Rob Drake material um, yeah I don't know what else is it to say it is it's very aggressive but in a way it's the most melodic that the Temple of Full Moon has uh, it's quite romantic in some parts but the duality between the fierce aggression that they put out uh, and then the romanticism is yeah that kind of makes it for me and the scope was on Greece for a while but the scope is now full on Poland so um, Poland Poland I don't know how to pronounce it but we'll see what happens but yeah expect a lot more from this part of the world that's Celtic winter first one hi we're back we switched to beer we are still in this beautiful outside setting we are <laughs> drinking a triple caramelite it's been four years since I've tasted this and it's quite good uh, it's a brown standard beer for Belgium but uh, it's actually quite good it has nuns on it and there you go all right so I um, was talking about Poland I was talking about um, Graveland I forgot to mention everything about the record but I guess because um, it will show up more so I'll talk about it more then it is yeah like I said the romantic shot but it's half step it is waltz material there are some classical component composing material in there so there's much more going on there and not just aggression also beauty um, from Poland and this actually has some links to Poland I was um, diving heavily into the Greek black metal scene uh, with Pede for a video that I hinted on this channel uh, the early scenes across the world and Greek would be one of them I've been reading the rites of the abyss uh, the Genesis, Genesis and history of Greek black metal by Aris Shock on uh, heavy music artwork it came out um, a UK label so this has not been a cheap book I am at chapter 2 I think spirit of the 80s so I'm still in the early stages of this one but um, yeah I've known Rotten Christ a bit I've known Varathon a bit and I've known Necromantia a bit but I never really listened to Necromantia um, they are one of the pillars definitely now that I heard some of their material and this is the demo, demo material compiled onto a double 12 inch done by artifacts a uh, Polish label Poland uh, pops its head up again and will be one more link with this and I'll tell it now because otherwise I'll forget on the demo 93 or rehearsal 93 they have the um, the eagle on the um, pentagram with the lightning going through it that Legion uses so yeah that's the first time that logo shows up which I always thought was the you know um, table of full moon unofficial mark but it's more the legion mark but it shows up on this tape first which is a weird thing that that is a link um, but yeah let's not force it in this is the first three demos from Necromantia on vinyl I have to reach from my notes uh, promo 90 the black arts from 92 and demo 93 which I was talking about this band has risen to the top of Greek black metal for me even past a rotting Christ because I think what these guys were doing um, and once again I'm not super well versed into all the early material by the other bands but this has notes of prog this has notes of jazz this has notes of uh, experimental free music and then it rolls into um, yeah black metal through doom and through influences by that ss pole chain that entire section of um, proto black metal so yeah this is like i said 90 92 93 so very early um maybe when May mayhem was between death crush and the mysterious something in between there but there's so much more going on in those early years um, and they were one of the bands that were spearheading the scene and not just Greek but worldwide because it was such a small scene this is on Artifacts Records like I said the second one or the second release the first release was uh, Ulvich I'm blanking on the title um, yeah I'm blanking I think it's demo material pretty sure because this is also demo um, 
very good by two guys that we're going to talk to that about uh, the entire scene i hope one day but these are basically two young guys in greece that found each other and that decided to start playing black metal under the influence of the entire i guess a bit norwegian scene but i don't know where they got their start because it's the same time as a norwegian scene i can't imagine they heard that crush and then went black metal a bit i don't know it's it's kind of hard to make the, uh, the link but let's talk about the records this is like i said blood ritual a very heavy cloth bound um, leather pressed foil stamped everything you want um, expensive records but it justifies this is done by the magus since uh, the baron blood died i don't know when i think some time ago by now but it doesn't mention it's a celebration more than it's a remembrance if you will first one it comes with this booklet that is perfectly integrated into the thing um slow dead backing vocals by howlings barren blood on eight string bass and morbid on bass and vocals like i said this is prog this is jazz this is all those 70 weird shits filtered through the 80s and then thrown into the 90s something like that i think that's where they are coming from uh but yeah dedicated to barren blood signed by the magus um, certified by artifacts this is 425 i think of 666 but yeah it's a gorgeous release this is the barren blood edition there was a magus edition the weird thing on this one is that they if you look at the track list they reversed um the demo so you have 93 92 90 why i don't know because i don't know i really don't know but yeah there you go um first starts out like i said proggy this is the there were a lot of colors described and i think the pressing was a bit described better than it is is just basically gold and black but it's done nicely um so yeah done with care i don't know very heavy light doesn't shine through or anything so yeah, heavy vinyl uh but this is done with care the Ulvich is also very beautiful if you have a copy please sent me one um i'm puzzling this back together but yeah this is very early greek material that is jesus as important as anything you will ever hear for the um, development of the style or the development i think if you listen to dark throne um you know the intro for the first one and you hear the vocal in the intro and you listen to some of this shit, i think they were influenced by the greek scene as well as everything else they were listening to but yeah if you can get your hands on it it's worth it uh the the original tape they go for a million i don't know two million whatever cheers it's late at night so we're going to ramble a bit um i'm going to speed it up a bit this is hmm, dirt food <laughs> i don't know how to pronounce it it's a d over the umlaut d f over the umlaut d d with and here we go with the title best variance for omfant recreation i think uh, from sweden in 2002 this is limited to 333 and this is um yeah a weird record um this was made by very young folk in um sweden they if i can from what i understand they were 13 to 16 years old and they made um yeah some serious good material mastered malacht frantic scrafium blah 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 tracklist by original there's a lot of non-readable font and stuff on here this was done by uh flame which is it's not the ajna offensive i think i haven't written it down no um if you go on youtube and you look at the digital download the comments they um someone mentioned this intro sounds like uh, sleep paralysis how that feels so i never had it but i can imagine it is um very weird from the start very young folk like i said uh and they go into bands later like or the what this becomes is uh, riverorum ip malacht the fucked up band i talked about with yo um which is christian metal avant-garde perfect for roadburn let's just keep it at that for next year 
They have reaches into Abihor, they have reaches into Graf, um, Griftes, Kimsfning, all the Swedish top material that we already talked about. Um, but yeah, um, this is Demo 3. It was tape only when it came out originally. I don't know on what label or anything, but uh, it says somewhere uh, Dolsvot was a juvenile black metal project spanning a period of two to three years. I never called it depressive, but having spent the last 20 years recording new music and yet what I hear is people asking for this album, it certainly feels depressing. Um, it says somewhere, I don't know where in the liner note or read it somewhere that uh, there are no synths on here, but the sound or the... It sounds very synthy, but it's the vocals or the guitar and effect on it that is layered throughout. Um, but yeah, it's weird sound very sloppy drumming rim shots here and there but when he when they go fast it's tight it's i mean confident it's it's a really weird record um guitar tone is like a basso going through it the entire time um but yeah it still has yeah it still has a lot of good music on it and it goes into Riverorum Ip Malacht, you can kind of hear the seats uh, for that band in this one. Um, so yeah, Flame, so I think it's on Ajna Offensive. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm 99% sure. In our world, that's good enough. Let's do one more before we cut. A good one? Yeah, a good one. This is Dimo Borgir with For Altit. I have to look at the date. I've lost my paper. I think it's 95. Uh, I really lost my paper, but it's, that's okay for this one. What this is, is uh, the first Dimo Borgir record I ever owned because I do not like the band. I don't like the image. I don't like what they have become, what they sound like. Um, this, they're actually one of the bands that um, I kind of heard early and then decided like everything with keyboards sucks ass. But, Mosquito. Um, this one is different. This is from 95. This is the first full length after a 7 inch they had. I'm blanking because I don't have the paper. But the 7 inch is basically two last tracks of this one, which are Im I Eveng Tens Morke 1 and 2. And then the Rabjorn Speiler Dauchheimens Skude, perhaps. Those are on the, um, on the 7 inch that came out. But this is the re-release on Nuclear Blast, Blast, it's German, um, from 21 that compiles the For Altit and the Rehearsal 94. I don't know if it's the first or the second rehearsal. One is from March, I think, and one is from August or September. It's spring and summer, I know that. But this is the full length that has all those strikes. Um, it is Norwegian, it is black metal, but it's something very different from the start because of the... The only thing necro about this one is the vocals and also in some parts. Um, it is very melodic, it is Dimoborje, but in their early stages, so it's not commercialized as big as it is. Dimoborje is like Rammstein black metal or something like it. When this was happening, they weren't, so yeah. I think, you know, by the way they look and the way the record is looking uh, this is the picture disc classic debut album limited edition double picture disc unreleased rehearsal tracks rare photos and lyrics poster is there a poster in here wow look at that there is a lyric sheet and there we go and the poster is it hanging up no here it is it is the cover art with the promo pictures which is folded weird but here we go there you go so nice package the cool thing about this is that it is a picture disc and picture discs have come miles from since they were born um, they actually are very clear and audible Doré artwork yes of course and then some excellent pictures Vomitous Mass on Instagram showed the um, early promo pictures by Dimo Borges and they were... I was hoping they were included here in a booklet or something because they are from this session. But it's the naked torso guy with the uh, pin stick or whatever you want to call it, but then in a very menacing pose that is not on here. 
I wish it had this had a little more, bit more uh, liner notes just to have some more info, but yeah. I guess there was not more info than this. Um, but yeah, from Poland to Greece to Sweden to where are we now? Norway. We'll see where we end up in part three. Right, while Adams is fixing the fire, producer of all trades, uh, we are going to dive into the last four and I'm going to go through these a bit faster. These are newer records. One is an older one, but the rest is, mm, I don't know, old and new. The first one is Dying a Full Moon. Here we go, a German band. And I have to check when, I think around, yeah, In Thy Dreams from 94. This, the Demtron der Sterne is from 95. There we go. So smack in the middle of the period that is of most interest to me now, although I'm noticing the early 90s is where it's really at. Um, this is one of those bands that is later, I think around the same time as Moonblood, and they are mentioned sometimes and in some places on the in the same story. Um, this is a duo, TB Slag Zug and As Tarot Victarius with guitar and Stimme or vocals. This is a release on Alter, not Alter, but um, Amorfati. Jesus, been a long time. There we go. Bullet focus. I'll hide my eyes. It's a cute sticker that has, yeah, under them Tronen der Sterne Demo 95. Schneidend, kalt, rasend, and antrukt. I don't know what that means. German, whatever. Um, but yeah, this is one of the two demos from Dying Full Moon. I have to look at my notes that I found. Um, one of the guys is um, the band quickly disbanded. They were split into a different band or they came from a different band. I can't remember now, but um, one of the guys is still active in the scene as he is doing artwork, um, especially the thing that caught my attention was the scene, the S-Y-J-J-Y-N on What's that label? Sepulchral Voice. Uh, he did the artwork for that one, and it was the Asian-inspired lion crest with the flames and the wings, whatever. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, it has those desperate Haiti vocals, fast-paced BM. There's the comparison to Moonblood, especially in the production. I Moonblood is a leak above, but that is just because these guys only had two demos, 94, 95, and I think Moonblood has so many dem demos and so many of so much material that they are one of the bands that they they have so much output but it's all worth checking out they have just two demos that are i don't know if they are both worth checking out i think the um, the other one the 94 is a bit more regarded as classic um but this is maybe a hidden classic or a forgotten classic uh they tap from the same vein as uh, or from the same necro riff material as uh Moonblood for the Dark Throne era, that kind of thing. Um, anything else? Yeah, it's like Moonblood, but less straightforward. There are intros, ambient passages, samples. It has more to do with atmosphere or mood than Moonblood, which Moonblood goes for the throat. This one has more influences, I should say. Not as much as um, Necromantia, but still a lot. Uh, it is on Coke bottle vinyl i think this is still available because like i said forgotten classics don't get picked up these days but very worthwhile if you have the tape um yeah you know but the j card for the tape is incredible i um, really like that one and it would be cool to have some inclusion into this one because this is just basically sleeve inner sleeve and that's it there's no liner notes you can't find it you can find stuff on them but it's you know just put it in uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have the new, and I have to flip my pages. This is the new uh, Despel Omega. There you go, I'll get it out in a minute. This is the Long Defeat, the um, third one in the The Trilogy. It struck me as how, um, when I listened to it, and I actually listened to it today digitally, I, I haven't even spun the records, but um, I was very familiar with uh, Mitt's career, if you will, um, Despel Omega with the trilogy, the 
the false, the you know, the trilogy, the Parakletos. Um, but then they you know, they did the Drought EP, and I followed that. But then they had the Treat D, um, and it is the Synergy of Molten Bones from 2016, Furnaces of Pangenesia, I think from 2019, and now the Long Defeat. So they have. It seems like they have hit a um, point in their career where there's another trilogy but I haven't followed it as much as the first one or the you know infernal battles everything that comes the split with mutilation it's insane what these guys did but they are still active and I just you know it's Despot Omega I buy it's now DSO here we go this is the long defeat uh, five tracks on here and uh, Toriadromia Edam Set Alitich the long defeat Sie sind gerichtigt and our life is your dead. On Novida, there you go. I always forget what that stands for. Norma Evangelium Diabolis. Very good artwork. Everything is on point. I think they did. Yeah, they did something with. I, I blank. I'm blanking on it, but yeah. Just standard black vinyl. There is no color. It is dead spell. Oh my god! Imagine they would re-release this on colored vinyl. Uh, yeah, that would be good. Uh, it comes with this beautiful artwork. There's a key which I really adore. It's a bone key, I guess. Something on the back. And then it falls out, and as in true Death Spell fashion, there's a lot of text material, there's a lot to read, there's a lot to uncover. So I haven't gotten to it. But uh, let's. Pick the notes. Uh, very whining, technical and fast in some parts. Um, but I was wondering, that's what I've been written down, of, or what I had written down. But I'm wondering if that wasn't always the case. They have always been very technical, very song driven, very proficient at their instruments. So the conclusion I'm pulling out of all this is that I've listened to yeah, not enough that's Spell Omega, so that's on the uh, on the list. Um, yeah, powerful forward, pushing production. There's a lot of bass in this. It's all very clear. All instruments get a room to perform. But it is a new direction since Drought, and I think the um, yeah the next trilogy is a fact. I just noticed it now, just because of the DDD. I don't know. Maybe it's just I'm reading into it too much. We'll see. Um, but yeah. The last track, um, which is, let's find it real quick on this one. Our Life Is Your Dead really has a dead rock, not dead rock, but dead rock vibe uh, in a sense that it kind of reminds me of In Solitude in some parts. Um, it goes into a different direction and the entire thing goes into a different direction. But I think it's built up throughout the last trilogy. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I've remembered the name. The artist that they work together is Dan Sora. I think he did this one and I think he did some work. The key, it wouldn't surprise me if the key was his, but yeah. This is Novida Norma Evangelium Diaboli. I think the Liebsleda is also of interest to me. Liked the white record. But yeah, money is tight these days. Support. Um, we are almost true. I'm going to blow to this one because I've shown the tape and I don't know what to say more about this one except for it's one of my favorite records of the year. It's one of my favorite Belgian black metal records. It's Step Into the Pentagram by Forbidden Temple. I'm just going to show the cosmetics because it's, like I said, I've talked about it. It is a very good record. If you, they started as not Temple of Full Moon worship, but they took a lot of influence from Poland. They took a lot of influence from all the early material that black metal had to offer. They are students is, is a bit, I'm a student because I don't play music, but they play music. So they know what they're doing. The best bands in Belgium, I think now they are. They skipped uh, Moon In and they skipped Perverted just because they have more material, better playing, better releases, just more releases. But yeah, here we go. On Gramschap, it is just a classy as hell black record with dark purple center labels. And the info sheet is just a photocopied A4 info material. 
But the thing on here that I forgot to mention, the sword and chain track is made with a pole chains drum machine, which is, that is such an incredible touch. I don't know. It's Forbidden Temple. Something special within the scene. The last thing I have, uh, and this is the cherry on top, if you will. One more, if you will, for the if you wills. If you will. This is the um, last release by, or the, for now, last release by Medieval Prophecy Records. Here we go. This is Evil Feast with Thy Abhorrent Emerging. Uh, the first demo from 2002. Uh, my notes are somewhere. We'll go off the dome. This came out on tape on that label, I think, some time ago because it was quite early in their, or mid in their, yeah, career as we uh, stand now. Polish dude, Evil Feast, he is on, um, yeah, he is Grim Spirit. He is the guy behind Evil Feast and he has a quite a lineup. I'm thinking about my notes. I'm thinking about the Raven Moon Sanctuary that I've written down that is not important right now. I've talked about that. This is the demo by Medieval Prophecy Records that is, um, yeah, sublime. It has a lot of guitar work on here that is all over the place. It has very melodic yet high and open synths. It, for a demo, this is incredible. This is one of the top demos out there um, for the after the 90s material, I should say. Inner Dark spear, Spheres, Morbid, Morbid Chanting, sorry, Entering the Forest of Old Wisdom. All voices and chants performed by Grim Spirits. Music and lyrics written between Autumn 97, that's why it's good, and 2002, so it took a while. Um, it came out on his label, but I'm blank on the funeral industries maybe, but I'm, I'm throwing stuff apart. Anti-Trend, this is copy 284 out of 230. And I am remiss to mention the uh, the zine that was, I thought I brought it because I'm at Thomas's place, but it seems it's not in there. I've, it's in my reading pile. It's in my to read or read pile. So I can only talk about, um, yeah, this one. Maybe we'll do an addendum or a mini review on the zine. I think that's what we're going to do. Uh, this is what's coming up on Medieval Prophecy to end it all. There we go. I talked too much. The mosquitoes are coming, the dogs stopped barking, and we're drinking. Cheers. Oh, no. Fuck Russia.